In this exam soft quick dip, I will be going over ways you can release student results. There are really three main ways. The first way is through a secure exam review, and this is something that's done through Exemplify. You set this up when you're posting an exam, and uh, students can either immediately or on a delay review the answers to the questions, and you can set it up so that they can see the questions they got right and wrong, or just the ones that they got wrong. And I'll go into more detail about how you set that up in a moment. The other common way is to release a strengths and opportunities report from ExamSoft. You can choose how much or how little uh, of the information in an assessment to release to the students, and students will get a PDF of this report when you release it to them. It will be posted to the ExamSoft portal for them. The third way is to push final grades from an assessment to Canvas. I'm not going to go over how to do that in this video. I've made another video on how to do that, and I'll link to that video in the notes below. Everything that we're going to talk about today is happening in the assessments part of the ExamSoft portal. So let's first go over how to uh, set up a secure exam review. Like I mentioned before, this is something that's done in Exemplify, so it will provide a secure environment for the students just as Exemplify would in the secure exam. Uh, so the students won't be able to take screenshots of their results or they won't be able to uh, switch over to any other programs and just like in a secure exam even the internet is turned off. So you would normally use this um, in a way that it, kind of a similar way that you would uh, implement a secure exam so you'd make sure the students didn't have their cell phones and that sort of thing when you're doing a secure exam review. Faculty have a couple of things that they can control um, whether the students will see all of the answers or just their wrong answers and by just allowing them to see their wrong answers that can sometimes speed up the exam review process. Best practice is though to show them their all their answers so that they um, can get reinforcement for those ones that they also got right. And best practice is also to show a rationale for each question and that can be done uh, through the exam review as long as you have already put in those rationales when you built the assessment and posted it. There are two ways to do a secure exam review. Uh, immediately after the students finish their test, so in that same sitting, or you can set it up on a delay where you uh, determine a, a time where you want the students to go back into Exemplify and do the review. One thing to keep in mind though is that because all of this is set up when you post the exam, um, there's no opportunity to do the score adjustments in a way that the students are going to see them in a secure exam review. So even if you go into the portal, uh, do some score adjustments, that information is not getting to the students through the secure review. So the only way to, to get that sort of information to the students uh, is through a strengths and opportunity report. So just keep that in mind. This is really just a review of their raw score you haven't made any uh, corrections at this point. So to set up uh, a, a secure review, um, you would go in and you would post the assessment like you normally do. So this is the assessment posting window. And you'll see here near the bottom is a secure review um, option. And you just click on this uh, kind of double arrow to open the section up. And when you do, you'll be given the opportunity to, do, to select either an immediate secure review or a delayed. So let's first go over the immediate review. So these are the things that you need to provide. Uh, every secure review requires its own password. So this is a password different from the exam password. When students go in to do a secure review, if it's immediate, um, they will just have to, as soon as, they're, as, soon as they submitted their test, uh, as long as you've given them this review password, they'll be prompted for it. They can put it in and they can go through their, their answers. You also set a time limit so that um, maybe you only want to give them an opportunity for like 10 or 15 minutes at the end of an exam period to go over their, their results. Uh, you can do that here. In fact, you have to set a time limit. Some optional things that you can do are show incorrect answers only. So you can limit to just the wrong answers and you can also choose to show rationale if you want. For a delayed review, it's very much the same everything I talked about in the last slide applies here, but you also have a start time. So this is a time um, sometime in the future after the students do the test that you're going to allow 
the review. Often this is maybe the next time that you meet, um, the next class, you would set that up. Because you're setting this up at the time of posting, you can't change this. So once you've posted the, the assessment and students have downloaded it and taken it, this is kind of set in stone. And you also have to supply a delete by date and that's when the exam file will be deleted from their computer, the review file. When students do the review, either an immediate or delayed, they see something like this in the, um, the current portal, the current version of Exemplify. Uh, this is a, a select all that apply type question, so it's fairly complicated. Um, students can select more than one right answer, and what it's showing here is the answers that have a check mark by them were the ones that were keyed as being correct. So that information as well as the color of the, the option letter indicate which were keyed as correct, so A, B, and C. The background color indicates whether the students got it right or not. So you'll see in this first one, even though it was keyed as correct, the student didn't select it, so they got that one wrong. B and C were keyed as correct and they selected it, so that's why the background is green. They got that one right. For D, uh, this one was um, not keyed as correct, but the student selected it, so they got that one wrong. They incorrectly selected that one. And the next one, it was not keyed as correct. They did not select it, um, so that is that was a correct selection, but it was not keyed as right. And you can tell the difference between these two. This one, the student selected incorrectly. This one, the students did not select correctly. Um, and the difference is this, this little icon right here. So it's a little bit confusing in the current implementation of Exemplify. However, um, over the next couple months, this is changing. And so the new version of Exemplify is going to look like this, where the student's uh, responses are just shown by an outline of the answer. So these blue outlines show what the student selected, and then the check marks show what was keyed as correct. So in this case, A, B, and E were keyed as correct, um, and the student selected A, B, and D. So it's a little bit more straightforward. This, this implementation of Exemplify will show up um, probably in the summer of 2019. Okay, so the other way to get student results to the, to the students is to release a strengths and opportunity report. So this is a fairly straightforward process and I'm just going to go through the steps on this slide and then I'll show you in ExamSoft. First thing you have to do is go to the particular assessment that you want, you want to release the results for, click on the assessment name, hover over the report scoring tab, and then select either release exam taker results or strengths and opportunities reports. Now these two do very similar things. The, the selection of options is very similar. The difference is that if you click release exam taker results, the report that you're generating will actually be released to the students. If you collect, or select strengths and opportunities reports, it'll generate a PDF that downloads to your computer, your faculty, um, account. So this is, the strengths and opportunities report option is just something that you can generate for yourself to see how the students are doing, <clears throat> excuse me, but it isn't automatically released to the students through the portal. And this the second option can be useful if you're meeting with a student and you just want to download um, their re one student's report for example, or some people use this so that they download all of the students' reports, give it out to them in class, and then collect them so that they don't have um, too much information about the exam that they walk away from, but they can still learn from their mistakes. Usually if you're releasing exam taker results, you probably are going to release very minimal amount of information so that the question text and answer text doesn't get out there into the wild. So what I'm going to go over is how you do this first option, release exam taker results, because the, the steps are very similar. There's a couple more steps involved in release exam, releasing exam taker results, so that's why I'm going to use that as my example. So let's first go over into ExamSoft and see what this looks like. So we're going to be going into the assessment tab, and then we will select a particular assessment. I'm just using this one as an example. 
and like I said in the slide, you'd hover over the report scoring tab and go down to release exam taker results. The first thing that you can do here is select which students you want to release grades to. Um, you can select individual students or you can choose to select all students. Normally you would select all students by clicking the top checkbox because you're releasing this to all students in the class. Then you'd scroll down to the bottom and hit the next button. Uh, I should mention too if you have more than one posting if, like in more than one section of the class you have to select all postings separately. Some people miss that there's a, um, a drop down here for each posting so just make sure that if you want to release all your sections at once that you've selected all students. When you have, click Next. And here is where you have the options of what you want to actually release to the students. So I'm going to switch back to the presentation to go over the kind of the extremes. Um, if you just wanted to release kind of the minimal amount of information, which is really just their score, um, whether what questions they got right or wrong, and the rationale, this is what you would select. Um, You'd select their score, the rationale over an under, under assessment, their name probably, although if you're posting this to their portal, you don't actually need to put their name in there. Their answers, you may choose to do that. This will give them um, information about which selection they made. So that can be helpful, especially if you're going to go over some of these questions in class. They know what they selected. Uh, this actual question sequence doesn't really make a difference unless you're going to, if, if you're going over this report with the class, um, you wouldn't want to click this because you want everyone to have the same sequence. If you click actual question sequence, that's showing the students the sequence that they saw the questions. And remember, this can be randomized for every student. So if you're going to go over it with the whole class, normally you would leave this unselected. So that's going to show the minimal amount of information to the student. And I will I have a, an example of what that looks like in the final report here that I can open up. So in this case, I've removed their names. Um, but what you see is something like this, where it shows you the question. In this case, I've shown the title of the question as well. And it says which one was the correct. D was the correct answer and that's what was selected. That's why it's green. It's because they got that one right. Um, and it'll do that for every one that they got right. When we get to a question they got wrong, it'll be color-coded red and it shows what they selected, B, and that, that was incorrect. So it doesn't show any of the other options. It doesn't show the text of the options or the text of the question. It does, however, show the rationale, for example, right here. So students um, especially if you're going over these questions with the whole class, they can look at their answer. Um, it's probably up on the board, and this is a good example. They chose B. You're going to project B on the board, and then they can look and see why that was not correct. Okay, so that is for a minimal um, strengths and opportunity report. Then if you want to give them all the possible information, basically you select everything except for this one wrong and wrong questions only. If you select wrong questions only, they're of course only going to see the questions they got wrong, but best practice is to show them uh, the questions they got right as well so that they can be reinforced about why that's right, especially if you want to show them the rationale. So in that case, uh, I have a, an example of what that looks like, and you'll see that it's Quite a bit more information. First of all, there's um, information I've included about category performance. So any categories you have coded to your questions, they can see how they're doing over um, over that group of questions. Shows them the average for the for the class as well, and whether they are doing well or need improvement in that category. So I scroll down here, and now when we get to the questions themselves. Uh, you'll see there's a lot more information. There's the STEM text and all the option text as well as which ones were right, which ones were wrong. The rationale is still there and then which codes were um, coded to that question. So this is 
if you were going to give out this type of report, you probably wouldn't release it to the portal if you wanted um, wanted wanted to use these questions again in the future. This is something you might print to a strengths and opportunity report, uh, print it off, give to the students in class, and then collect it at the end of class. Okay, so let's go through the process of releasing the Strengths and Opportunities reports. Um, on ExamSoft, we've gone through here, we've selected all the options we want. Let's, I'm just going to do some minimal ones just to, so the system um, lets me do this. And then once we've selected everything, um, I should mention too that if you have essay questions, you can choose to, to release the essay responses. And then down here, You'll see each essay question listed, and you can choose to release the comments that you've made for that essay question. And if you happen to have used a rubric to score those, there'll be more options here for releasing the rubric scoring. So once you've selected everything you want, I always recommend you hit the preview button. This will allow you to see what the report looks like, and you can just double check that you're releasing the appropriate amount of information. Once you're happy with that, you would hit the send link with email. Um, button. So let's just go over that process again. This is the, the that same options, those same options that were at the bottom of the screen. So once you hit send link with email, this email uh, editor will come up where you can write the students a message um, and this message will be sent to the students with a link to the ExamSoft portal where they and instructions on how they can find the report. I do recommend that you click this do not send uh, option under 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 undeliverable emails um, because of the way that the Hassan email system is set up if you don't select this it gets flagged as um, with a warning the big yellow banner at the top of the email um, and it might look to the students like they're you know it's spam or something so if you click do not send um, in this part of the the options at the top that that banner will not show up so once you've written the content of your email uh, you can hit the preview button and you can oops you can see what that email will look like to the students and you'll see it says the actual exam name and then it gives them information about how to log in and find their results um, report So this is what it would look like from the student end. Once they've logged into exams, their ExamSoft portal, they would click on the Courses tab. They would find the class in the list. Um, in this case, um, we're us I'm using Goofology as my example class. Click on that name, and once they do, uh, there'll be a list of assessments that show up from that class. And for the assessment that we're talking about here, there'll be this little view results um, option and it, once they click on that the PDF of the report will open for them so they can always go back to their portal and find their results file and if for some reason you mistakenly released too much or too little information in the in their results file you can go back and re-release it and it will overwrite this link so that students only see your latest release And when they do click on this button, they're just prompted to save the PDF of the report to their computer. Okay, that was all I wanted to talk about today uh, with regards to releasing exam taker results. If you have any specific questions, please don't hesitate to contact the Office of Assessment. Thank you.